Uh, let's begin with this first uh, presidential daily brief for the president-elect Joe Biden today. Uh, famously, Barack Obama told Donald Trump when he came into office that North Korea was likely the, the greatest threat that his administration will face. I wonder, uh, in Biden's briefing today, w what do you believe would be the number one threat to this country today? Well, Jim, the president's daily brief, the PDB, is a document that covers a range of topics. It could have something related to a recent uh, terrorist threat or engagements with China or, and Russia, maybe uh, North Korea uh, nuclear developments. So what Joe Biden will expect is to hopefully receive the same PDB that's delivered to the White House every morning. Now, Joe Biden, when he was vice president, he had a briefer who brought him the PDB. So there'd be a back and forth in exchange. So I fully expect Joe Biden to be very curious about uh, a number of issues. Again, whether it's Russia, China, terrorism, proliferation, uh, the whole range of issues that the United States has to deal with on the international stage. I Iran is front of center right now, particularly after Iran's top nuclear scientist w w was assassinated. And it, it really a, a remarkable uh, event just over the last several days. You have called this assassination highly reckless. Uh, Iran is blaming Israel, saying it had U.S. backing here. I, I wonder, first question, do you, why is this reckless in your view? Well, I think we've seen that Iran is going to feel obliged, as it has in the past, to carry out some type of retaliatory strike. Uh, and especially during a period of presidential transition, when we have to be sure that this administration doesn't do anything to undermine the next administration's approach to these very, very challenging issues. And so, therefore, I believe that there needs to be standards of international behavior uh, to uh, exclude assassinations. And so I believe it's reckless because, again, it can provoke an Iranian response that could escalate then into not just heightened regional tension, but also possible confrontation. Do you uh, believe that this is a deliberate attempt by the Trump administration to tie the Biden administration's hands, for instance, uh, on the possibility of re-entering the Iran nuclear deal? Well, I don't know who was responsible for this assassination, uh, but I, again, I do believe that this is something that uh, Western democracies, as well as countries around the globe, should not engage in an assassination. So whether or not the Trump administration was aware of it in advance or provided some type of support, again, I am not aware. But this is something that should be, I think, condemned roundly by the international community. If the Iranians carried out an attack like this against an Israeli scientist, for example, mm -hmm. inside of Israel, there would be no hesitance in terms of the condemnation. And so therefore, whenever a country is going to attack this, uh, an official of a sovereign country, I think that goes way beyond what can be and should be expected of countries in this day and age. The, the Obama administration was very aggressive in its use of force abroad, drone strikes, uh, particularly on terrorist leaders uh, in, in a number of countries. Why is this one different in your view? Well, again, um, the attacks and strikes against terrorist leaders and operatives are consistent with international law in terms of taking actions against illegitimate combatants, which a, a Al Qaeda member is. They are not part of any type of country or sovereign state. The strike against Fakhrizida was a strike against a senior Iranian official, an official of a sovereign nation. And therefore, there's a great distinction and difference between killing a terrorist who is trying to carry out attacks against innocent lives, uh, as opposed to a strike against a government official of, of another sovereign state. I want to ask you about uh, the president's continued attack on the U.S. election. Uh, and we had yesterday, again, uh, a senior official from the Trump administration, Chris Krebs, uh, who led the effort to protect this election, saying in no uncertain terms there were no votes flipped by a foreign power or domestic power. Yet can Trump, Trump continues his attack on the election. What damage is he doing to U.S. Uh, elections with those attacks? Well, I think he's doing damage both on the domestic front as well as on the international front. On the domestic front, I think he really is fueling suspicions, unwarrantedly so, in the minds of a lot of Americans about the integrity of this election. But I think Chris Krebs and a lot of the other cybersecurity professionals in this administration did their very best to protect the integrity of the election. So therefore, I think he's sowing the seeds of doubt in a lot of Americans about what actually happened in this election as well as then in future elections. 
on the international could, stage. I think he really is you know, disparaging mm -hmm. our ability to carry out these free and fair elections. And so the United States, the world's you know, oldest democracy, really should set the example for the transitions of power from one person or party to another. The, uh, you mentioned sowing the seeds of doubt, and clearly there are seeds of doubt in this country. Uh, a recent polling shows 70 percent of Republicans feel the election was, was rigged. Uh, but we had a Republican congressman on this network earlier this morning, Congressman Riggleman from Pennsylvania, Republican again, I should note, who noted another risk. I want to play his sound and get your reaction. Have a listen. The president has to stop sort of bloviating on this preposterous ridiculousness because most people in the intelligence world are looking to scratch in their head going, you need to stop this because it's it could be radicalizing people based on data that's just faulty and ideas that are just out there. Radicalizing people. I don't I don't have to tell you the risk of d d domestic right wing groups, domestic terrorists, etc. But are you concerned about beyond sowing doubts that the president is giving some of these groups something to act on? Well, first of all, good on Congressman Riggleman. Mm -hmm. More Republicans should be speaking up and out against these very fallacious claims about, you know, the fraudulent election. But yes, I am concerned because when the president of the United States, you know, Donald Trump, he speaks, he has a voice that is heard throughout this country. And it is resonant among those elements that really do believe that he was defrauded. Well, he really wasn't. He wasn't at all. And so therefore, will they take to the streets? Will they potentially use violence? I hope not. Thankfully, they have not done that mm. so far. And I, I do hope that calmer heads will prevail and that Congressman Riegelman and others will try to calm down these concerns that uh, Donald Trump, unfortunately, is escalating. You have served for decades as, as an intelligence officer, uh, of course, led the CIA as well, as Russia was attacking uh, this country's elections here. Have you in your time witnessed a foreign disinformation operation as damaging as the one we're seeing coming from the president and his allies right now? You know, I used to think that the Russians were the world's most uh, sophisticated and expert uh, sources of disinformation. But unfortunately, I think Donald Trump and a lot of people of his ilk, his supporters, um, have now demonstrated that they are able to uh, just consume the airwaves with these claims and allegations that are totally baseless and specious. And so I think that Donald Trump certainly has exceeded the ability of the Russians to influence the uh, minds, the, the ideas, and even the votes of the American people uh, as he continues upon this very unfortunate disinformation campaign. It's alarming to hear.